Highlighting history of suburban Sydney with the St Peter's Cooks River History Group. Our aim is to preserve and promote local history. We are based at St Peter's in Sydney's Inner West. The original municipality of Concord was on the south bank of the Parramatta River, halfway between Sydney and Parramatta. Its history and development was closely linked with the river, the road and the railway. In the 1790s, on the midpoint of the road from Sydney to Parramatta, Longbottom Stockade was established as an overnight detention point for gangs of convicts. Concord Oval now stands on the stockade site. The stockade developed into a village, then the suburb of Concord. Between 1840 and 1842, the stockade held 58 Canadian exiles, after whom the suburb of Canada Bay is named. A monument at Canada Bay commemorates these French Canadians who had taken part in the Papineau Rebellion and were sent to New South Wales as political prisoners. In 1793, Lieutenant Governor Francis Gross granted land to four free settlers who began farming an area known as Liberty Plains. He also granted land to six non-commissioned officers and named it Concord after the town in Massachusetts where he had served during the American War of Independence. Other land grants were made. Thomas Walker purchased Meredith's grant and built Rhodes House, named after Rhodes Hall, his mother's ancestral home near Leeds in England. The name was given to the peninsula. Isaac Nichols, Australia's first postmaster, was a major landowner. He built a home called Urala. In the 1840s, another Thomas Walker, banker and philanthropist, acquired Nichols' property and commissioned architect Edmund Blackett to design a large two-storey mansion. In the 1890s, architect John Sulman extended the second floor of Urala House. When Walker died, he left the estate in trust to his only daughter, Edith, and a bequest for the construction of the Thomas Walker Convalescent Hospital. During the latter part of the 19th century and the early 20th century, two modes of transport were available to hospital visitors, road or river. The river was the preferred option. Patients were transported to the hospital by ferry. Significant buildings on the estate are the Landgate House, Watergate House, dairy and stables. Currently the hospital building is occupied by the Rivendell Child, Adolescent and Family Unit. When Edith died, the Edith Walker Convalescent Hospital was established in the old home. Urala land was used by the Sydney Golf Club for their opening event in 1893. Five years later, local members formed the Concord Golf Club. Early churches in the area were St Mary's Roman Catholic, built in 1845. Today's church, the third on the site, was completed in 1929. St Luke's Anglican Church Foundation Stone was laid in 1859. Extensions were added in various stages. In 1884, an organ was donated to commemorate Edith Walker's 21st birthday. In 1883, Concord was proclaimed a municipality. It covered today's suburbs of Cabarita, Concord, Concord West, Liberty Grove, Mortlake, North Strathfield and Rhodes. In 2000, it merged with Tremoyne Council to become the City of Canada Bay. The development of Cabarita and Mortlake was determined by their proximity to the Parramatta River. Cabarita Point and the adjacent Corrie's Gardens became recreation areas because of their water frontage. Corrie's Pleasure Gardens moved from Botany to Cabarita in the 1880s. Corrie provided swings, merry-go-rounds, a cricket field, running track and summer houses. In 1887, a dance pavilion which could accommodate up to 900 people became a great attraction. When the gardens closed in 1918, the pavilion was relocated to Weeruna Holiday Camp at Point Lowly, South Australia. The house in which the Corrie family lived is still standing near the entrance to Cabarita Park. The area occupied by Cabarita Park was reserved as a recreation area in the 1850s. 
A wharf was part of the Sydney to Parramatta steamer route, dedicated as a reserve for public recreation and access to wharf in 1880. In 1903, the timber frame of the ornate fibrous plastered rotunda in Centennial Park which was used for the proclamation of the Commonwealth of Australia, was relocated to Cabarita Park, then known as Mortlake Park. A park kiosk was erected in 1923. In the early 1920s, the council provided a netted area for swimmers along the Parramatta River. An Olympic and children's pool opened in 1937. They were named the Concord Cabarita Coronation Baths, to commemorate the coronation of King George VI. In the first 30 days following the opening, 30,000 people visited the baths. Mortlake owed its growth to the coming of industry. This began in the 1880s when the Australian Gaslight Company established a major works there. With the influx of people, the district was quickly transformed with houses, transport services, schools, shops, and churches. A gasworks building, now known as the Blacksmith Shop, was erected as a general workshop in late 1891. Renovated in 1922, it is one of the few 19th century structures remaining at the former AGL site, which has been redeveloped as a medium density residential area known as Breakfast Point. The name originates from the time when Captain John Hunter stopped to have breakfast on his first journey up the Parramatta River in 1788. Ten days later, Governor Philip came to inspect the area and the party also stopped at the same place for breakfast. The Australian Gas Light Company War Memorial was unveiled in 1926. It has since been replaced by the Breakfast Point Memorial. A timber structure with the appearance of an old chapel is the Breakfast Point Community Hall. From 1874, Mortlake was connected by horse-drawn bus to the railway at Burwood. The need to transport labour to the gasworks led to the opening of a steam tramway between Burwood and Mortlake in 1901. The gasworks entrance was the Mortlake tram terminus. The line was extended to Cabarita in 1907. The electrified tramway opened in 1912 and continued until 1948 when replaced by buses. The Palace Hotel opened in 1886, the same year as the opening of the gasworks. It was built on the river at the end of Tennyson Road to cater for the gas workers. It was a distinctive building with verandas and a tower. The hotel was demolished in the mid-1920s and a new one, also called the Palace, was built further up Tennyson Road, nearly opposite the entrance to the gas works. The hotel became a watering hole for the workers and was one of the few Sydney early opening hotels. A variation to normal hotel trading hours accommodated workers coming off night shift. The Mortlake Vehicular Cable Ferry commenced operation in 1928 to enable employees at the gasworks who lived on the northern bank of the river to reach their workplace. Today, the Mortlake Ferry, also known as the Putney Punt, is the only vehicular ferry operating in Sydney. In 1886, the Northern Railway line between Strathfield and Hornsby opened with a railway station at Rhodes. This provided a transport link which gave impetus to industrial development. The area near the railway line became an industrial centre whose factories produced stock feeds, paint, chemicals and engineering products. A general hospital for the Australian Army was established on part of the Walker Estate. Temporary pavilion-type wards, operating theatres, an x-ray department, pharmacy, kitchen, boiler house and living quarters created an operational hospital. When a multi-storey building was completed in 1942, the 2,000-bed Yarala Military Hospital was the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. With the cessation of World War II, the Repatriation Commission assumed full administration of the hospital. In 1993, the hospital was transferred to the New South Wales State Health System and became Concord Repatriation General Hospital. 
The Kokoda Track Memorial Walkway links the hospital, where many Second World War veterans were nursed back to health, and Rhodes Railway Station. The walkway highlights places of significance in the New Guinea campaign and pays tribute to the sacrifice made by Australian soldiers. At the Rhodes end of the walk is the site of a World War II Commonwealth shipyard where small ships were constructed. A sculpture in Bray's Bay Reserve acknowledges those who built the ships and those who served on them. In 1948, the first petrol-driven lawnmower made in Australia by Lawrence Hall was used at his parents' home in Concord and the grounds of the Cabarita Speedboat Club. Modern mowers, including the Victor, were derived from this one. The man who started producing the Victor in his Concord garage in 1952 was Mervyn Victor Richardson. The landscape of Rose was dominated throughout much of the 20th century by increasing industrialisation. By the 1980s, Rhodes was known for its toxicity and odour. Extensive remediation in the early 2000s cleansed the toxic soil. Today, west of the railway station on former industrial land is the Rhodes Waterside Shopping Centre, apartment blocks and a public foreshore walkway. East of the railway, Rhodes Corporate Park, built on the site of the former Tullock's Phoenix Ironworks. The former Rhodes Public School, now a community centre, St Mary and St Mercurios Coptic Orthodox Church, the First Urella Sea Scouts, and the Rhodes New South Wales Fire Brigade Station, which has served the local community since 1921. It is staffed by on-call retained firefighters who respond from home or their businesses in the event of a fire call. The suburb of Liberty Grove, built on former industrial land, was named after the original farming area, Liberty Plains. A number of shipwrecks visible in Homebush Bay are remnants from when the bay was used as a shipbreaking yard, a cemetery for retired ships. The SS Airfield, formerly the Coromel, was a steam collier. It was to be dismantled. Plans came to a halt when operations at the shipwreck site ceased, leaving the ship half standing. Today, it is known by locals as the Floating Forest. Concord, with its many parks, has been called the parkland suburb of the Inner West. Queen Elizabeth Park, formerly Concord Park, was renamed in honour of Queen Elizabeth II after her visit to Australia in 1954. Henley Park was the site of Concord or Longbottom Cemetery from 1870 to 1910. All the graves are relocated when the park was created in 1938. Bayview Park and Massey Park Golf Course and Parklands are located on reclaimed swampland. The Riverside Golf Club operated on the reclaimed land until 1953 when the Massey Park Golf Club was formed. The car park of the golf club was the location of a stone quarry which was filled with household rubbish and sealed with a layer of ash from the nearby Mortlake Gasworks. It took 12 years to fill. The quarry had been purchased by Arthur Foxcroft in 1912. Using stone from his quarry, he built a Federation-style cottage named Foxcroft, which is still standing in Frederick Street. The City of Canada Bay Museum features a collection of items that represent the history of the area. Local industry items are on display. Today, the biggest change for the area has been the rehabilitation and redevelopment of the many large industrial sites. Most of these have been replaced with residential and commercial developments that enjoy their proximity to the Parramatta River. If you have enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel. It's free. Coming soon, Industrial Concord. And check out our website, St Peter's Cooks River History dot wordpress dot com